Multilevel models, also referred to as mixed models or random coefficient models, are used to analyze data that have a nested structure, such as participants nested in schools, regions, or countries. The purpose of this video is twofold to help you understand how two level modeling works and to provide a three step procedure for performing this type of analysis using STATA, R, SPSS, or M. Imagine conducting a study on the popularity of the leader of the best selling boy band from the 90s to 2000s. You spend your day passionately gathering the number of Instagram followers of each of these boy band leaders, placing them on a seven point continuous scale. The simplest way to summarize this data is by using the mean. In the simple, the average popularity score of the boy band leaders is 4.725. Obviously, this very simple model fails to accurately represent the actual popularity of boy band leaders. Take Justin Timberlake, for example. His popularity score is way off the mean with a difference of plus two. As for this other guy, we don't really know, the difference is minus 2.5. For Harry Style, the difference is plus 1.5. In ordinary least square regression, the aggregate of the mean of these square differences, in other words, all these little arrows, is known as the variance of the residuals. Now imagine conducting a study on the popularity of all members from the best-selling boy bands from the 90s and the 2000s, not only their boy band leaders. The structure of your dataset is different than before, as you now have a hierarchically structured dataset with two types of units. Level 1 units, which are boy band members, nested in level 2 units or clusters, which are boy bands. As before, the simplest way to summarize this data is also by using the overall mean or grand mean. However, and this is the core principle of multilevel modeling, this time there are two types of residuals. On the one hand, the amount by which the model fails to accurately represent the within cluster variations is referred to as level one residuals. It is calculated by taking the mean of the square distance of Justin Timberlake lens bass, etc., from the mean of their specific boy band, NSYNC, plus the mean of the square distance of each member of the Click 5 from their boy band, and so on and so forth. This captures the unexplained within cluster variations. On the other hand, the amount by which the model fails to properly represent the between cluster variations is referred to as level 2 residuals. It is calculated by taking the mean of the square distance of NSYNC, the Click 5, the Jonas Brothers, and so on and so forth, from the grand mean. This captures the unexplained between cluster variations. With such hierarchical data, using traditional regression may result in bias estimates because of the violation of the assumption of independence of the residuals. To put it simply, this assumption states that the residual associated with a given data point is independent of the residual associated with another data point. Here, this assumption may not hold true because the residuals linked to any two members of the same boy band are likely to be more related than the residuals linked to members from different bands. Using two-level linear regression will enable you to address this issue. Now imagine you want to test two hypotheses. Your first hypothesis is that there is a positive relationship between a boy band member's hotness and their popularity score. The level of hotness is a characteristic specific to each boy band member, making it a level one variable. Other examples of level one variables include a boy band member's height or hair color. Your second hypothesis is that the statistical effect of hotness is stronger for boy bands from the 90s than flows form after 2000. The hypothesis is a cross-level interaction hypothesis, which is an interaction between a lower and a higher level variable. Indeed, period of success is a characteristic of the boy band as a whole, making it a level two variable. Other examples of level two variables include the number of weeks a boy band's hit song remained in the charts, or the number of views their biggest hits received on YouTube. 
I'm now going to guide you through a three-step procedure to test this hypothesis, and I will show you the stata and R commands for each step, but the SPSS and MPLOS scripts are provided with the dataset in the description of the video. The first question you need to answer is, do I want to estimate the overall effect or the pool within cluster effect of my level one predictor? Your response to this question will determine whether you want to use one of two forms of centering, grand mean centering or cluster mean centering. Grand mean centering a level one variable involves subtracting the overall sample mean from each observation. In your case, grand mean centering hotness will involve subtracting the overall mean of hotness from each boy band member's hotness value. A positive value on the center variable indicates that the boy band members is considered hotter than the typical boy band member in the overall sample. If you opt for grand mean centering, or if you decide to leave this variable uncentered, it will lead you to estimate the general between observation effect of your level one variable, which in your case is the absolute between singer effect of hotness on popularity. However, cluster mean centering a level one variable involves subtracting the cluster specific mean from each observation. In your case, cluster mean centering hotness will involve subtracting the boy band specific mean of hotness from each boy band member's hotness value. A positive value on the center variable indicates that the boy band member is hotter than the average member of his band. Choosing cluster mean centering will lead you to estimate the within cluster effect of your level one variable, which is in your case, the relative effect of hotness within boy bands. For whole parts, we'll use cluster mean center hotness. The second question you need to answer is, what proportion of the variation in your outcome can be attributed to differences between clusters? To answer this question, you will need to create a model with no predictor variables and calculate the ICC, that is, the intraclass correlation coefficient. As you can see in this equation, the ICC corresponds to the ratio of the variance of the between cluster residuals to the total variance of both the between cluster and the within cluster residuals. And basically, the ICC quantifies the degree of resemblance of the observation belonging to the same cluster and can range from zero to one. An ICC of zero indicates perfect independence of the residuals. The observations are completely independent of cluster membership, and there is no between boy band variation. However, an ICC of one indicates perfect interdependence of the residuals, and there is no within boy band variation. In your datasets, the ICC value is 0.82. This indicates that 82% of the variation in popularity score can be attributed to differences between boy bands, which is actually very high as ICC in hierarchical designs typically over around 0.05. Using the ICC, you can calculate the design effect, which quantifies the degree to which a multi-level sample differs from a simple random sample. The design effect is obtained by adjusting the ICC based on the average cluster size, in your case, the average number of members in each boy band. By convention, a design effect greater than 1.5 suggests that the estimation of standard errors from traditional regression will be biased and that multi-level modeling is needed. The third question you need to answer is, does the effect of your level one predictor vary from one cluster to the next? In multi-level modeling, just as the mean of the outcome can vary from one cluster to another and form the intercept residuals, the effect of a level one variable can also vary from one cluster to another, forming the slope residuals. In your case, this means that the effect of hotness can naturally vary from one boy band to another. Simply put, although the overall mean effect of hotness and popularity is positive, the effect may be particularly strong for some boy bands such as NSYNC or the Jonas Brothers. It can be new for some other bands such as the Backstreet Boys and even negative for others such as One Direction. To estimate this kind of variation, you need to build two models. First, a constrained model which includes all relevant predictors but excluding the cross-level interactions. 
These predictors, hotness and period of success can be seen in the regression equation and comments. In the equation, the terms U and E represent the level 2 and level 1 residuals, respectively. Second, you need to build an augmented model which includes the same predictors but also incorporate the slope residuals for hotness. Again, this term captures the natural variation in the effect of hotness from one boy band to another. In addition, the augmented model includes the covariance term which basically captures the correlation between the intercept residuals and slope residuals. I won't elaborate on this any further because it would be a lengthy but less critical explanation, but it is important to note that this parameter cannot be presumed to be zero and must be included in the model. The next step is to conduct a likelihood ratio test to compare the deviances of the two models, determining whether the augmented model provides a better fit than the constraint model. By convention, if the likelihood ratio test is significant at an alpha level of 0.20, it suggests that the variation in the effect of the level 1 variable from one cluster to the next is substantial, and the random slope variance and covariance terms need to be kept. In our case, the test does suggest that we need to keep the variance and covariance term in the model. The third and final question you need to answer is, are your hypothesis supported? To answer this question, you need to build your full and final model. As you can see, your equation and comments now include the cross-level interaction term. The output is interpreted in the same way as any regression. In this case, the effect of hotness is not statistically significant as zero is included in the 95% confidence interval. This means we cannot reject the null hypothesis that there is no relationship between hotness and popularity. Without the triple negative, this suggests that you cannot conclude that hotter singers are more popular on Instagram. However, the coefficient estimator of your cross-level interaction is significantly different from zero. This means that the effect of hotness depends on the period of success of the boy band. Upon decomposing the interaction, you will realize that the pattern is consistent with your hypothesis. The pool within boy band effect of hotness is positive from 90s boy bands, whereas the effect is null for past 2000 boy bands. These results are presented in a mock paper that was published in a predatory journal. Despite its absurd nature, the paper offers a good example of how to report multi-level analysis. This video serves as an introduction to multi-level modeling. The link to the tutorial on which this video is based can be found in the description along with resources related to multi-level logistic regression, multi-level modeling involving three or more levels, cross-classify models as opposed to hierarchical design, application of multi-level modeling to repeated measures and longitudinal data, and sample size in multi-level modeling, where you will learn that a minimum of 125 clusters with 25 participants per cluster is required to detect a typical cross-level interaction of the time presented in this video. That's all for me. Bye, bye, bye.